Hi, Gordon the Gamekeeper here again. In previous episodes of Conservation Fact Files, we learned about the Game and Conservation Manager's work in the farmland, upland and woodland habitats. This time, we shall take a look at the role predator and pest control plays in helping to maintain the balance in our countryside and how it relates to the UK's bird and mammal species. Predator and pest control has been performed throughout the ages by many organisations, not just gamekeepers. Early records from ancient Egypt 4,000 years ago show the use of cats to control rat and mice issues and protect their grain stores. Even now, county councils and some conservation organisations have predator and pest control plans, both domestic and agricultural, used for the protection of endangered species, foodstuffs and public health. We are going to talk a lot about predators, prey and predation, but what do these terms actually mean? The Oxford Dictionary defines a predator as an animal that naturally preys on others and cites the example, wolves prey on small mammals. In this context, the word animal means a vertebrate animal and includes a mammal, bird, reptile, amphibian and fish. The Oxford Dictionary defines prey as an animal that is hunted and killed by another for food. For example, the fox pounced on its prey. Predation is a biological interaction where one organism, the predator, kills and eats another organism, its prey. Predators may actively search for or pursue prey or wait for it, often concealed. When prey is detected, the predator assesses whether to attack it. So with those definitions locked in, we can start to talk about our countryside. We have seen in previous Fact files how responsible game and land managers create or maintain habitats in the countryside. This is primarily for the benefit of the particular game species they are employed to look after. For example, grouse, pheasant, partridge, etc. However, they do have an added responsibility to ensure that not only game species are protected from predation, but also other species, some of which are endangered. At this point, it is worth asking the question, how do we know they are endangered? Well, for bird species, we refer to the Birds of Conservation Concern 4th Edition list. That's the BOCC4 list. Bird organisations have come together to review the UK Island and Channel Isles bird populations since 1969, assessing the conservation status of each species. The document lists 244 bird species and classifies them as either red, amber or green status. Of the 244 species listed in BOCC4, there are 81 species assigned green status. That's up 22 from BOCC3 in 2009. These are the species of least conservation concern. Of more concern are the 96 species on the amber list, Historically, their population declined, but it has doubled in the last 25 years. Nevertheless, there has still been a 25-50% to 50 decline in breeding population over the last 25 years. That leaves us with the 67 red-listed species, up 15 from the last survey. These are the species of the greatest conservation concern. They are globally threatened and have sustained a greater than 50% decline in their breeding population in the last 25 years. The full lists and further explanation of the review process can be found on the RSPB and BTO websites. Just search for Birds of Conservation Concern to learn lots more about them. Take a look at the red and amber lists and see how many bird names you recognise. So what's the problem? At a time when there has been a marked reduction in good wildlife friendly habitat due to changes in farming practice, removal of hedges, increased housing estates and increased road building etc, which is changing the shape of our countryside, there has also been a marked increase in the population of generalist predators and despite the best efforts of many organisations to increase or maintain numbers by habitat improvement alone, many of our much-loved species are in serious decline. Consequently, it falls to game and conservation managers to take preventative measures in areas under their control by adopting a predator control or management plan to redress the balance, and we will show how this can be achieved later. 
Responsible Game and Land Managers perform this action under specific licenses issued by the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. DEFRA is the UK Government Department responsible for safeguarding our natural environment, supporting our world-leading food and farming industry, and sustaining a thriving rural economy through legislation and a wide range of improvement initiatives. DEFRA have issued a range of licenses that cover individual species or groups of species that in general terms allow for the management of predators, to conserve wild birds and to conserve flora and fauna, to preserve public health or public safety, to prevent serious damage to livestock, foodstuffs for livestock, crops, vegetables, fruit, growing timber, fisheries or inland waters. Here is a summary chart prepared by the British Association for Shooting and Conservation that shows the range of birds and the circumstances under which measures can be taken for each predator species. So who are the predators? In our countryside habitats, predators fall into two groups, birds and mammals. Gulls are powerful predators. Their numbers have continued to increase over the last 50 years. Not only will they steal your chips at the seaside, but increasingly they prey on other birds' young and even newborn lambs. But they're not the only predators. Jackdaws, crows, magpies, weasels, stoats, mink and rats also take their share of eggs. The declining population of songbirds and waders need to be protected. Our crops and woodlands need to be protected. And that is where responsible pest and predator control comes into play. Keeping the balance is the never-ending challenge facing any game and conservation manager. There are many species of birds that prey upon others for food. Let's look at one species family, the corvids. But what is a corvid? Simply put, corvid is the name given to birds of the crow family, which includes stout-billed birds such as crows, ravens, rooks, jackdaws, jays and magpies. They will prey upon eggs and chicks from the nests of songbirds and ground nesting birds. Typically species such as pheasant, grey partridge, red legged partridge, grouse, curlew, lapwing, oyster catcher, plus all songbirds. Bearing in mind, game and conservation managers are required to follow the current legislation when employing predator control methods. Here are two examples of the circumstances where control can be applied in relation to crows and magpies. They can be controlled in relation to conservation, and this means it is limited to protecting birds on the BOCC4 red and amber lists only. So no indiscriminate control, just because they're noisy and there are lots of them. They may also be controlled to prevent attacks on livestock, their feedstuffs, and to prevent spread of their diseases. If you are squeamish, now may be a good time to look away, as I'm going to show a video of what crows can do to young animals and why we need to protect them. If you're still watching, here it comes. For people who don't understand why carrion crows need to be controlled, I'm lambing at the moment, and this is just a daily occurrence. This is from a carrion crow. Now, dead lambs don't bleed. This is probably seen off the, uh, the young lamb, to be honest and this one as well but there's many many more throughout the day this is this is just not uh, this is just not the only two this morning this is the one from this morning um, what the crows have killed and what they've actually done as well whether you can see it or not but they've actually ate its tongue and that's what they do and it's still alive but I'm, I'm gonna have to put it out of its misery now but this is this is again this is what we we'll have to see every day Young lambs are a valuable resource and source of income to our agriculture industry, so need to be protected from this kind of attack. OK, you can look again. So how do we control corvids? The primary methods of control include shooting, disturbing nests and trapping. Trapping uses two main devices, the larsen and ladder traps, both of which will attract live birds to be caught and removed. The good news is that any species of bird attracted to the traps, other than those allowed by legislation, can be released back to the skies as they are non-lethal traps. So we have talked about corvids, but what about other predators? 
Well, the other class of predator has four legs. They are the mammals. The primary predators are the fox, stoat, weasel, mink, and rat. Examples of species that are vulnerable to these predators include the ground nesting birds and songbirds mentioned earlier. And additionally, woodcock, kingfisher, skylarks, water vole, and the brown hare. So how do we control them? Game and land managers will agree a predator control plan to minimise the damage caused by these mammalian predators. That plan will, depending on the threat, include the use of rodenticide for rats and mice, shooting and trapping. Again, achieving a balance in the countryside by controlling mammalian predators is governed by legislation regarding what, when and by whom controls can be applied. For instance, rodent control may only be carried out by qualified and certified operatives using rodenticide and then only in approved situations. The legislation even describes what traps can be used, thus providing for the swiftest, most humane removal of the pest. Trapping legislation defines the types of trap that are permissible for use, even down to nominating a particular brand, such as the DOC 150, a humane spring trap developed by the New Zealand Department of Conservation. These traps must be set in such a way that they only allow the target species to be caught. They are enormously powerful and thus have to be enclosed in a box so that the casual rambler or child does not accidentally tread on one. Ouch! Conserving the balance through responsible and legal pest and predator control actively supports the retention and recovery of endangered species, like those on the red and amber lists. The hard work of the keeper is also helping us retain our precious songbirds so we never have a silent dawn. Furthermore, managing the habitat in this way allows us to continue to hear the haunting cry of the curlew and delight in the sight of our ground nesting birds tending their young. So this time we have learnt about predators, prey and predation, what it means and why it is so important to protect our most vulnerable species, including the birds on the red and amber lists, from both winged and mammalian predators. So until the next time, goodbye for now.